Hey guys, it is Howitzer here, and I have noticed that there is a huge disconnect between fans of the Alien prequels and the rest of the Alien franchise. Even though I know some of this is just the fact that people may not enjoy the prequel films as much as the later films, I think a big part of it is that the prequels have led up to inconsistencies that don't fit in with the later movies and have taken much of the mystery away from the original Space Jockey and the Xenomorphs. Now I'm hoping that Ridley Scott is able to clear up all of this in Alien Awakening or other later films, but after seeing Alien Covenant, I'm not fully confident that he will be able to wrap up the prequel series and make it nicely fit with the later movies. Because of this, I have done some of my own storytelling to be able to find a way to make the prequels happily fit with the later movies and do away with most people's issues currently plaguing the franchise. After hearing feedback from you guys, it seems that there are a few major issues right now that don't allow the prequels to mesh up correctly. The first one is the larger issue, so we're going to tackle that one first. In order to do this, I had to come up with two different alien races that would exist in the alien universe. The first one, we know, and I'm going to call them the Xeno Engineers. These are the engineers that we see in Prometheus. They're different from the engineers that we see on the planet Paradise in Alien Covenant. Now I actually thought that these people on the Paradise planet in Covenant were beings created by the engineers from Prometheus originally. But Ridley Scott has said that the people on the planet are engineers, but my idea works even if they are in fact engineers. The second race that I want to introduce you to, I'm going to call the Alphas, and these are a species of aliens that exist above the engineers. It was back before Alien Covenant had come out that Ridley Scott was showing footage of the film at a Las Vegas convention. There were some writers for websites there that wrote about a possible alien species that was above the engineers, and this always intrigued me. We didn't see any evidence of a species above the engineers in either Prometheus or Alien Covenant, but I realized by introducing the species, we could clear up some of the biggest issues causing a hang-up with the prequels and the later films. On top of that, there is no retconning needed. We begin the story with the Alphas, as I will call them. They are a race of 12 to 15 foot humanoid beings that have existed long before the humans and the engineers. The Alphas were extremely intelligent and capable of long distance space travel. They had become masters of biology and were able to guide their own evolution and could craft almost anything using organic substances. They were once a race with similar build and height of the humans, but through self-engineering they had grown to the larger sizes we now know. We pick up at the beginning of the idea with an Alpha Scout ship exploring an unknown section of space. The single pilot would encounter a planet that contained a long dead civilization, but by the structures of the old cities on the surface, they must have been an intelligent civilization as well. The Alpha sensors showed the planet to be void of any plant or animal life. It almost looked like there was a biological attack on the planet that was responsible for wiping out all living things. The buildings have worn down over time from weather. Even though there were no beings in these cities anymore, there were also no plants to reclaim the buildings either. The Alpha knew that entering the atmosphere of this planet would be very dangerous, but his curiosity got the better of him. So he sent down an unmanned drone into the area that his sensors believed to be the epicenter of the biological attack. The drone was able to retrieve a small black box containing a ball-shaped glass vial of a black liquid. It was not able to detect anything living while on the planet, and due to its small size it was only able to return the one sample. Once the drone returned back to the Alpha ship still in orbit above the atmosphere, the Alpha attempted to sterilize the sample and then store it on his ship. Unfortunately his sterilization techniques were not up to the task, and the virus was either leaked out of the box or was attached to the outside of the box and was able to infect the pilot. He knew he was dying and sent out a distress signal to any other Alphas in the area. When an Alpha medical ship showed up, they were able to retrieve the black box and were able to clean the outside safely enough to store it on their craft. Unfortunately, they had to destroy the scout craft in order to contain the virus and then they marked the planet as unsafe for further study. 
The team knew they could not take the sample back to any inhabited planets, so they took it to a moon that contained a newly built and small scientific outpost that was used for studying foreign and alien materials. It just so happens that this moon would later be called LV-223. During the same time frame, other members of the Alpha race had discovered the human race on Earth while exploring star systems. They were intrigued by these young humans after noticing that they seemed very similar to their original form, although it was obvious that these humans evolved naturally and were not created by some other alien species. They decided to study the humans from afar, but eventually decided to interact with them. Once the Alphas decided to leave Earth, they directed the humans to meet them on LV-223 once the humans could reach out to the stars. And this was recorded by many cultures and cave paintings that were later discovered by Shaw and Holloway in the beginning of Prometheus. They picked LV-223 as it was a safe place at the time. Its purpose was to be a way station of sorts for alien beings and materials to make sure everything going in and out of alpha controlled areas was free of contagions. They had no way of knowing that by the time the humans would be able to reach the moon, that this base would somehow fall under engineer control and would be full of unsafe chemicals where it would later become a more military-like installation. After finding and then studying the humans, the Alphas then went on to create the engineers on the Paradise Planet using their own technology and human DNA. So the engineers didn't make the humans. Their DNA matches because the Alphas used that DNA to make the engineers. During the same time, they were still studying the black goo on the moon LV-223. They were able to make many different variants of the black goo. The original primordial version simply broke down DNA to its base forms. They found after years of experimentations that they could create a version of the goo that would not only break down the DNA, but it could then reconstruct the DNA in whatever form they saw fit. It was the version of the goo that the Alphas used to create the engineers. They then found another version that would either kill or break down any form of organic life on a planet. The life that didn't die would be changed into an aggressive form of life that would kill anything that it came in contact with. This was the goo that we see with the Xeno engineer in Prometheus taking to sacrifice himself. And the planet he's on is not Earth, it's another unknown planet. This scene was an early test of this form of the goo when the engineers were unsure of its outcome. Even the deleted scenes with the elder engineers works for the story, as the engineers use a Xeno engineer for the sacrifice, not their own lives. They knew the individual had to die to test it, and they did offer ceremony and condolence to the XE as he gave his life so they could understand this gift from those above the engineers. The third and final form known to us of the variants of the goo was a weapon form that was used by David on the engineers in Alien Covenant. The Alphas may have had other variants that we don't know of, but these are the versions that the engineers know of. We now jump back to the Alphas and they have realized the danger of most forms of the black goo so they take the safer versions back to another base on another planet for further study, leaving the more dangerous forms on the moon LV-223. Sometime later, the engineers have evolved from the planet on Paradise and have now outstretched and set up outposts on many other planets in the local area. During this expansion, the engineers come across the moon of LV-223 and the labs of Black Goo. They also find one lone alpha derelict craft, the Alpha Derelict is a mostly organic ship with some manufactured parts. You can clearly see the bone and other organic parts in the hallway structure and throughout the ship. This craft appears to have been organically grown for the most part. You see, at this point in time, the engineers flew spacecraft more similar to what the humans are using. They did not have ships like the Derelict or Juggernaut yet. The engineers deciphered data from the Alpha Derelict, but not all of the data is retrievable or even fully understood. It is here where the engineers learn a little bit about who the Alphas were, and they begin to suspect that the Alphas may be the ones who created them. They've had no contact with the Alphas up until this, because the Alphas play a more standoff approach it seems with their creations. The engineers would then go on to study any information they could about the Alphas and the variants of the black goo that were left on the moon, the bad versions that were left behind to be destroyed. But the engineers didn't know this was the case. 
They would use the goo to create their own variant that they would use on themselves to create the Xeno engineers, or the engineers that we all know from Prometheus. The engineers weren't able to decipher much information on the goo, so they mistakenly saw it as very important to the Alphas and wanted to experiment with it. Meanwhile, back on the planet Paradise, most of the non-religious engineers have moved on to the various colonies and outposts, while a group of mostly religious engineers stay on the homeworld in the main city, awaiting a return visit from the Alphas. The Hall of Heads on the planet Paradise that we see in Alien Covenant was built by these engineers, including most of the surrounding city, to worship the Alphas and await their return. The Xeno engineers were more of a mystery than the engineers. They were created by engineers to do their space travel, military, and science. The Xeno engineers would then go on to reverse engineer what they could from the Alpha Derelict and use LV-223 to build their own versions of the ship. The engineers don't fully understand or have the biotech to grow their own ships like the Alphas, so they build their ships almost identical to the Alpha ships, replacing organic structures with lightweight synthetic materials that they can build rather than grow. You can even see in the two ships in the movies that the ships are very similar looking, but are of different builds. The Alpha Derelict only needs a pilot's chair for all control of the vessel, whereas the Juggernaut needs a control panel and cryopods for other pilots to help guide the ship. The Alphas had organically grown their own flight suits and armor out of a perfect version of the goo. The engineers, not having access to the perfect version of the goo, created their own flight suit and armor, but it was not as advanced as what the Alphas used. With the Alpha suit, not only could the pilot fully bind with his ship for total control, but the suit would actually grow and fuse to the chair, allowing perfect grouping of the Alpha's mind and the control center of the craft. This allowed an Alpha to fly solo on any of the ships and not need a crew. The Xeno Engineer's version did not fully interface or merge with the chair, Although it did allow an XE to mostly control all the functions of the craft, it did not do the same job that the Alpha suit could do. It was quite clear that the Xeno engineers admired the Alphas and did what they could to imitate their technology within what they had learned of the Alphas, along with their own knowledge of science and technology. Even though the engineers and XEs had amazing technology for building lightweight, strong structures and ships, the Alphas didn't build any more than they had to. They were so far advanced that they grew what they needed, organically. They had gone far beyond building things with real and synthetic parts. They could now grow organic materials that far surpassed anything made by man or alien. I got this idea on the difference of a grown, more advanced derelict versus a made, less advanced juggernaut from the following interview with Richard Stammers, the special effects supervisor on Prometheus. He states that the Juggernaut might look like it has come from the same factory as the Derelict and Alien, but it is not the same ship. The exterior shape is similar, but it has way more detail, and inside, it had a little less emphasis on bones and organic shapes that were present in Giger's work. After reading through his interview, I went and looked at the Derelict in the Alien film and the Juggernaut in the prequels, and there it was, clear as day. The derelict was much more organic. You can easily see bones and other organic growth in the hallways and rooms of the original derelict, on top of a much larger space jockey than what we see in the prequels. The prequel ships are of the same design, but they don't look organic at all to me. They look like engineer-made structures trying to mimic the derelict. Even the space jockey here is much smaller, not fused with the chair, and looks more engineer-made to me. Alright guys, this is where we're going to end part one of the Alpha story. We'll pick up their story and finish it off in part two next time. So if you guys like this video, if you could leave a like, it helps out so much. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, why not for all the future alien goodness to come? If you have any questions or comments on the story, let me know down below. But otherwise, I will see you guys back here for part two, where we finish this story up and see if we can fix the alien franchise.